Hi everyone, this is Erin with another SQL Skills Insider demo video. We're starting several sessions of immersion events in Chicago this week, and during IE2, which focuses on performance tuning, one of the topics that I cover is query plan analysis. For this week's Insider video, I thought I'd step through one of the demos from the query plan module, and I decided to go with the sort operator, as I see so many queries that use sorts, and I think it's important to understand the effect. The sort operator orders rows that it receives from an input, and this is a stop and go operation, which means that the rows that need to be sorted don't go to the parent operator or to the next operator until all of those rows are sorted. As you can imagine, this could affect the overall performance of the query depending on how much data has to be sorted. We're going to start in the AdventureWorks 2012 database, and I'm on a SQL Server 2012 instance, and you can get the AdventureWorks database from CodePlex. And we're going to start with a pretty simple query here, which is just a select against sales order header. And we're selecting four columns, and we don't have any order by at all. And let's make sure that we're viewing our actual execution plan. So let's run our query, and we get, of course, the entire table back because we haven't included anything in a where clause. And again, no order by. So if we look at our execution plan, we don't see a sort operator, not unexpected at all. And if we look into the details of this operator, I'm going to go ahead and select F4. No, really, there we go. You can see if we look at the properties of the operator, one of the things that I want to point out when we actually look here at the clustered index scan is if you look under ordered, right, we can see that it's false, not unexpected at this point. Let's hide this for the moment. Now let's go down to a query that does have an order by. So same exact query that we had before, except this time we've added order by customer ID. So let's go ahead and run this. And again, we get all of our rows back. And when we look at our execution plan here, we can see that we absolutely have a sort. And in fact, it's a pretty high cost. It's 79% cost total out of the entire plan. Uh, which is pretty significant compared to the scan itself, which was only 21%. And if we look again at the scan and we look at the properties of the scan, and we again look at ordered here, right, we see that this is false because no ordering is done in the scan of the index. The ordering is done here in the sort operator. Now, what we can do if we have a sort operator is we can choose to remove the order by entirely from the query. And in some cases, you may be able to go to the users and say, well, do you really need this data ordered? Does it really matter? And they may say, well, no, it, it really doesn't. And you could take the sort away, or perhaps you could even order at client side. But depending on your application, you may not have the option. You may need to do the order by in SQL Server. So one of the options for what you could do here is you could add a non-clustered index which supports the query and which supports your sort. So we're going to add a non-clustered index that uses that has customer ID and that also includes the additional columns. So we're going to have the customer ID as our key and then we're including order date and subtotal and sales order ID is our clustering key, our primary clustering key. So we don't need to add that because it's going to get added for us already. So we'll create our non-clustered index and now if we run that same query again with our order by, what we see in the plan this time is that we just see an index scan because our non-clustered index that we added supports the query entirely. And if we look at the op, if we look at the properties for this operator here and we look at our ordered note here, we see that ordered is true. So what's interesting is that the sort operator isn't always required, but the data is still sorted. We're still requiring the data to be sorted. And the cost of that sort is actually still incurred. But rather than having the cost as part of the plan, right, where we see the sort operator, the cost for that sort occurs when we maintain the index, right? As you're adding or updating or removing rows from the table and thus the index, the cost occurs there. Now what happens if we take our same query, but instead of ordering by customer ID ascending, which is implied, we're going to specifically order by customer ID descending. Let's execute this query. What do we expect is going to happen? We don't have a sort injected. Now when I created the index, right, I created it on customer ID ascending. And now I've said, well, I want customer ID descending but I don't have a sort added to my plan. And what you see here when we look in the properties 
is that ordered is still true. And in addition, note that we have scan direction backward. So one of the wonderful things that the engine can do is it doesn't have to read through the index forward, it can read through the index backward if that makes sense. So let's dig into this index just a little bit deeper, just as a reminder of what columns are included where. And I'm gonna use Kimberly's help index store procedure. And here's the non-clustered index that we created. And we know that the index key was customer ID and we included order date and subtotal. But again, sales order ID is our clustering key. And so that gets added into the index as well. And so we can see that in the tree, in this index, we have customer ID and we have sales order ID and it's ordered by customer ID and then ordered by sales order ID. So when we ran our query to select these columns for the customer ID in descending order, it could just read through backwards. All right, so now what would happen if we ordered on both of these columns descending? So we're gonna order by customer ID descending and sales order ID ascending. Well, we know that it's customer ID ascending, sales order ID as ascending, so now we're going to go backwards. And what we see is that sure enough, this non-clustered index still supports this. We don't have to add another sort at all. And if we look in here, we see that ordered is still true. And again, the scan direction is backward. Now, if I really wanted to inject the sort in here, I would have to have different sort orders. So I'm gonna have customer ID descending, sales order ID ascending. And now when I run it this way, I see that I do get that sort injected because my non-clustered index cannot satisfy this. Now we're gonna modify our query just a little bit and we're going to add an order by, excuse me, we're gonna keep the order, got, order by, but we're gonna add an equality predicate. We're going to include a where customer ID equals 13464. So when we do this query and we take a look at our plan, we don't have any sort, right? We have our index seek, we get a couple rows returned. And if we look, we only have the one customer ID. And because of that, and because we're not asking to sort on anything else, it doesn't have to do any additional work. And if we look in the properties of our sort operator, or excuse me, of our index seek, let's get the properties back. All right, we come down here and we have ordered equal true. All right, so nothing else needs to be done here. But if we change this, if we decide instead to use a range of data, and order by sales ID. Now this changes things completely because rather than just ordering by the sales ID back here where we had an equality where we only had one customer ID and that data was then sorted automatically by sales order ID because that was part of our key, excuse me, because that's the clustering key and that gets included in the non-clustered index. In this query, we've got a range of customer IDs. So we have three different ones, right? 13464, 13465, and 13466. But we're ordering by sales, ID, sales order ID, which is not how it's ordered within the non-clustered index. So in our execution plan, we have our index seek, and then we have to have the sort in order to get those rows ordered by the sales order ID. I wanna show you one last thing. I'm gonna take away our index and we've got one last variation of a query, which looks at a lot more data. We're gonna play with the same four columns here and we're gonna pull from sales order header and we've got a range for order date and we're gonna order by our, our order date. Order by order date is a little bit hard to say. So let's run this query and we look at our plan here. We have a clustered index scan, not unexpected because we took away our non-clustered index that we had created. So it's got to scan all of that. And of course we have our sort, also not unexpected. Now what we notice here, excuse me, when we look in our clustered index scan and when we look at our sort is if you look at the estimated number of rows here and if we look at our actual number of rows, they're the same. Right? And that information is captured from statistics or the optimizers using statistics to, to capture that data. So what happens if we, if we make some changes here? And the first thing that I wanna look at is I wanna look at the row and the page count. And so for my clustered index, I can see that I've got 31,000 and change for rows and I've got 716 pages. 
Now we're going to trick the optimizer and we're going to change the page count. And this is not something, excuse me, we're going to change the row count. Let's fix that right now. Look at that live in the demo. This isn't something that I would ever recommend doing in your production environment. So let's update our stats. We're going to change the row count. We're going to drop this down from 31,000 down to 100. And now let's see what happens with our query when we run it again with the, with the new basically statistics or information. We still have the same shape for the plan. We have a clustered index scan and we have a sort. But what I want you to notice is the triangle with the exclamation mark in the sort. This is something to pay attention to. In general, when you see a sort in a plan, I want you to look at that and make sure that it needs to be there. And could you do something to, to remove it? Could you not order the data? Could you order the data client side? Could you add a non-clustered index to support it? Would that make sense? But if there is a sort and there's a valid reason for a sort and you see the exclamation mark, that is something to look into further. And when you click on this and you actually look at the warning, what we're getting is that the data had to spill to tempdb. And this has occurred because if we look a little bit closer at our estimation, right, the estimated number of rows was 51. And again, we changed the statistics. So the optimizer no, no longer had accurate information. So the estimate's at 51, but the actual is now at six, is 16,000. So the optimizer made a decision based on what it thought. It figured out how much space it would need. And then there, were actual, there was actually a lot more data that was returned. And so it had to spill to tempdb. Anytime you see a spill to tempdb, you definitely want to investigate that further. And I tend to start with looking at cardinality estimates. We're going to clean up. We're going to leave things as we found them. And that's it for today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you'll start to investigate those sorts in your plans a little bit more. And until next time, thanks for watching and thanks for being a SQL Skills Insider.